hi, I'm Natalie from Namaste Farms and I'm going to show you how to make my Ainsley Daisy yarn. So it's making a yarn with Angora Bunny Daisies. Um, first of all, it does take felting. I um, felt the bunny flowers and they look like this. And I know that everybody thinks immediately that they know how I do this, but I don't think you do because nobody taught me how to do it. I taught myself how to do it just by like trial and error. And so I, a lot of the things I do aren't super traditional because um, I spend time kind of figuring things out rather than um, reading books or, or whatever. I kind of got really well known for my yarn before I actually even knew how to make it, <laughs> which sounds almost kind of... That doesn't sound right, does it? But what I'm trying to say is that my need to figure out new ways of making yarns or new things that people would like um, facilitated me just figuring things out rather than taking like a method that somebody ha I had seen somewhere and then expanding on it because I think that artistry is much that way. Um, you get inspired by something and then you take it and make it your own. I mean, music is that way, right? You'll like listen to even um, like uh, the Rolling Stones and we'll say like Muddy Waters, you know, was a huge inspiration. And so for me, uh, I didn't really so much have that because once I had been making yarn for a couple of years and just sort of plodding along and making it for really for me and for some people, I became, um, I, I ended up being able to sell it on a commercial level and so it just like, went from literally zero to 1,000. And um, in doing that, I never had a lot of time to like really cultivate a very finesseful way of doing things. I just had to create. Like I, I, it's like this literal like sort of um, visceral need to be different rather than you know having like years and years and years of being around fellow spinners and you know it being sort of this this um, camaraderie and then we share secrets that's not how it was for me I was totally like alone you know upstairs like completely in production and just the spinning machine so that said um, I came up with Ainsley Daisies and so what I do what I did is I had this really awesome um, Angora Roby, and I want I think this 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 did come from Village Spinning and Weaving in Bulton, and I want to say it might be a friend of mine's um, Angora, and her name is Denise Schreiber, and um, she is on Facebook, um, and she's on Ravelry, all for the dogs, and so I, you can find her there. She's awesome, and I'm pretty one thousand percent sure this is hers. So right here is this is a merino. It's like it's like a lace weight. So what I'm going to do is take this merino lace weight and I'm going to tie my, I mean, I just, as you saw, I just ripped off this section of Angora rabbit roving. And I'm going to tie this, it's, it's, I don't know how many ply this is. I think I bought this at Catnip Yarns and um, because my friend Kimberly McElinden told me to because she had some. So here I'm going to tie it pretty tight. You want something that's not going to break because this is like, this is like the, the base of my, my daisy, right? I need it to hold. I can't have my daisy falling apart. Okay, all this said, this yarn is not the kind of yarn you're going to be able to wash. It's, not, it's just not going to, it's just not going to hold up to that. I tried it and my, I tried to fold my yarn a little bit and my date, you know, my, my Angora bunny just started getting really ugly and like it just looked tattered. So it's best to not be fold. Okay, so I tied it in the middle and now I'm going to make a really tight knot. It's going to shed a little bit because, you know, this isn't all one length. This is roving. If you, you know, what would be better is if you hand combed it and you knew the length, the exact length. That might be better, but that wasn't what, that wasn't the way, you know, that I was able to come up with this. This is, I just worked with what I had. Okay, so then I'm going to like kind of spread my little daisy out, the beginning of my daisy. And I want it to be fluffy. And I don't want to pull on it too much, but I want to like spread. See these parts that are going to come off the ends? I do want to take those because I don't want it to have this yarn and then have to have a lint brush, right, with it. You know, every time someone, so I'm going to go and I'm going to kind of pick off the sides. It's exactly what I do. I go around and I'm going to pick off the sides. Any fleece that didn't get caught in the middle here, I'm going to take it out because I don't want this ugly daisy too. You know, I want it to look, you know, symmetrical. I don't want to have a bald patch and then like really long fibers over here and then no fibers over there. So, 
and I'm going to kind of move it around a little bit. I'm going to sit. And I'm going to blow on it and try to place fiber in places that looked bald so that it ends up being relatively even. And then I'm going to take my sponge and I love that I had two felting needles that Janice Roseman brought me because I can't find my felting needles because I don't make yarn anymore. And then my son thought it would be awesome to slam them into the table. So out of two I have one left and um, here it is. Let's hope it works. So what I'm going to do is I don't want to compact this too much, right? Because I want it to, the part of it that's really cool is that it does look airy. But I want to make the middle mound part, so I'm going to go around the outside in a big circular, because what I want is if these were going to shed out, I somehow want them to felt to their brother on the other side, so that it's not, you know, it's not going to, it's not going to, like I said, shed terribly. You're not going to need a lint brush every time you wear something with these Ainsley daisies. So of course the question is why are you calling them Ainsley? Well, there's a rabbit of uh, Christine Haddock's storybook um, fibers, storybook fibers, and her, she has a picture of her rabbit that's Ainsley and it is so darling. And so it happened to be the same day that I made this yarn that she put a picture of this darling Angora bunny up. So see I'm doing this, I'm making this wide wide area rather than doing it really. So I'm just going to keep, you know, felting it in the, like that. And I usually have one of those round felters. It has a bunch of needles in it. You know, and it, you, it's like, it's like round and I think, what is it? It's like clover products. I don't, why do I even act like I know what I'm talking about? Because I never know the name of things. I'm sure I've said several, I, I know I didn't say Janice's name wrong because I know her really well. Um, she's an advertiser. Not only is she, she's an advertiser probably because she just wants to support me because she's awesome. And um, she's who I bought the spin illusion wheel that I'm using right now from. And she's just awesome. Awesome, awesome lady. Great supporter, great, great pattern designer, great yarn maker. She is really a nice lady. She's a great filter too. Okay, so let's see. So I'm gonna just, you know, I wanna take pick it up and I wanna look at my daisy and I just wanna kind of pull it and just check and okay, whoever's doing that's gonna annoy me. Sorry. I'm trying to I'm trying to say it lovingly because it's my kids and I don't want you to think I'm abusive. Um, so lovingly, please stop it. So I'm just gonna keep doing it because I really want I, I, like I told you, I don't want to really felt it too much too much because it's going to be you, you don't want this ugly felted like you know that's the part of the beauty of an angora rabbit is that it's just so airy it really is um i used to have them and i would find a rabbit literally like they were in the barn and i have five acres and i would find i don't care where i went i'd go out in my car and, and, and i'd have angora rabbit on my windshield wipers and likes to travel it's one of my favorite fibers because it is incredibly soft. So I can see on this side, like I need a little bit more. You know, I just want to make sure that it's secure. So I'm just going to keep doing it, doing it, doing it. And then what I do is I'm going to take scissors. You don't have to. It's already looking awesome. But I honestly, I'm so in love with this. Um, and I actually take and just, I don't want to make it square, square, but I don't want ridiculous ends, right? Ridiculous hair, I just don't. That's just me. That's just my eye doesn't want to see ridiculous ends. So I mean, if they're, because I don't, you know, if you have too long, it's sort of like when we trim our eyebrows. You just, you just want it to look like it's not super thin. And if you trim it and blunt the ends a little bit, it makes it look thicker. So, and I could have, you know, I mean, there's other ways to do it, but, you know, usually when I was making yarn, I was in production and I didn't have time for that. I just needed to figure out how to do it, do it quick and dirty, make it so that it doesn't fall apart and move on to the next stain. I was telling JC I made $70,000 worth of yarn last year. Seriously. The IRS doesn't need to hear that. So we can all just be quiet. Well, no, that's what made me. And that, if you ever want to never make yarn again, do that. And then you'll be me, and you will never make another skein of yarn. I won't make it anymore. And I, um, JC is really awesome. She, um, every time I have, because so, every once in a while I'll just be like in the shower, um, shaving under my arms or whatever, 
and I will be like, wow, I have this new idea for this yarn, but because I don't want to make yarn, I will tell her, and then she will have the idea for me and make it better than what I had originally even discovered, and then teach you guys. Awesome, huh? And that way, you know, I mean, some things that I that are my, my tricks or secrets I'll teach you, but then there's some things I think that, you know, I love that she'll be able to share with you when you go to her clinics or whatever, or on her DVDs, you know, because, you know, especially when you're making yarn all the time, you don't have a lot of time to sit there and just drum up new things. It really is true. You know, people are, like her and Lexi are really busy. They're traveling and they're teaching and writing books and, you know, making DVDs and... Okay. So I'm getting pretty good here. Like I said, I don't want to over compact it. I love, I mean, this is, so really what I would have, would have liked to have done if I wanted to make yarn, I would have done more than just put this, um, this, this, you know, chartreuse middle. You know, I actually, actually was thinking of doing like little, you know, like pollen buds all around it. And I started to do it and then realized it was going to take me a long time. And I just, I don't have the time to do that anymore. And um, so I pulled them out. But it would be awesome to have like contrasting colors all around here, little tiny ones. And there's some really awesome felter. I'm going to say awesome a lot. There's a lot of really great felters like um, Fel Felting Sunshine and Janice Rosma and so many other people that will tell oh, Marina Post that will take the time to make this amazing. Frankly, I don't have the time and it's not a love of mine anymore. I love my animals and that's what I'm doing. And then I want to share what I have with you, um, my fleeces and um, these techniques that maybe someone else hasn't shown you. And then you guys just take them and make them their, your own. Okay, so here's, here's my base daisy, right? And I mean, I could have done, you know, I could, if I was going to sell this yarn, I probably would have taken more time and effort when I was spreading out the fibers. But um, hang on there, hang on. Here, I'm gonna just um, put this here so you can focus on that. But I would take a piece of mohair for the middle part, and I literally just ball it up. You know, like that works really well. Not. It does. I didn't even have to spit on it. Okay, so there, see? I just rolled it in my hand. No water, no soap, no nothing. Just like dropping it and rolling it, and then I'm going to put it in the middle. Right in the middle, right there. And then I'm going to take this felting needle, and I'm going to lightly felt it, because I don't want to like compact that, that sort of puffy part. I think it's really cool. So I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to go to the outside of this and tack it down. Okay, anybody who knows the way I spin knows that I spin back and forth. And what do I mean by that? I spin multi-directional. So I'll go to the left. And then I'll spin to the right, and then I'll spin to the left and to the right, and to the left and to the right. I don't go in one direction because I don't, I like to make single ply yarns and I don't want to overspin my yarn. And everybody's like, well, I can't get mine to catch. Well, the spin illusion wheel, it does, it, it allows me to be able to catch no matter which way I go. It's, it, it's not hard. And I don't know how to, someone's going to be like, what do you mean catch? I mean, like, instead of unwinding off the bobbin, it, it will catch as if it's my leader. So I'm constantly spinning back and forth and back and forth and back and forth. So I'll spin this way and then I'll spin the other way and then I'll spin this way to the right and then I'll spin to the left. And I'll just keep going back and forth so that my yarn is never, um, is it kinked. And that is, I talked about this on my other uh, video when I was talking about doing the fly tying method. And the reason I can do that is because I have really long fiber roving. You cannot do it if you have short short fiber roving. Okay, so here I'm going to um, just have my base yarn and then you can see that there's like too much of that. That's This is it. Always just breaking it. And then I'm going to incorporate this into the middle of my roving because I want it to be I want it to be secure. And I really don't want striping so I'm going to make sure that I somehow cover up this merino with my roving. And you you know you can it would be so much smarter had I used the same color tie as my roving, but of course I have to make everything hard and I didn't do that. So I'm just gonna try and cover it up. I'm gonna hot sequester it, but to sequester it in the middle. And see there I go. Sequestering. Oops, don't get my sequester. Sequester. See there's no striping. 
sequester. Now I'm going to take the other end, which is right here, and I'm going to sequester it underneath. If my yarn, if I was starting to kink here and was overspun, I would start going this way. Look, see how it just catches the spindleation is freaking awesome. I don't know why it does it, but it does. It just does it. But I'm not overspun, so I can continue going to the right. A lot of people, you know, I've had people not be, you know, fond of this wheel. I gotta be honest with you. I love it. It it's just it makes my life so much easier for this type of yarn. So I'm gonna try and sequester. See how I'm sequestering it? Sequester is a big word we use in racehorses, like if they have a chip and it's like hidden. Sequestration, it's hidden. So I'm gonna pull out my daisy like I got some of my fluff because I'm talking and I'm not paying attention. Sorry you guys. So I'm just gonna pull it out. But I should like be paying attention to not get A my hair or B my um my Angora rabbit caught on my base yarn. Okay, that's it. And then I just, you know, that's it. That's what I do. See, I've got a tiny bit of striping there, no big deal, because then I would just take the, but it's striping because I got the, the Angora caught in, not actually from the, so I just like try and patch it, because I don't want that striping, I don't, I don't like it. And I think it really takes away. So anyway, in this, then, since this is, I wouldn't just keep spinning and spinning, I would take it and, and, and I would actually, but manually put it through because I don't want to continue to spin and over spin this piece because I would put another daisy on. Like, here we go. And this was done with a different um, tie. It had some metallic thread in it because I was just doing, you know, I was trying to practice to make sure that I knew what I was doing, it, you know, which would have been nice if I would have used the same. I didn't, and I'm just going to do that. I'm going to stick it in the middle. And this is really, a real, this roving is super fine. It's not, um, like a thicker, I don't know, it's like a super, super fine, like a nice lace weight. But see, and now here you can barely see this little metallic thread, which would be an awesome addition if you really wanted to, like, spark, spruce up your yarn. But for me, I would have just used the regular merino. And then, just continue to go. I've been going the whole direction this whole time because I have actually not overspun my yarn, overspun my single. See, I'm hiding it, I'm hiding it, sequestering it, sequestering it. And then I would, as I just said, I would go ahead and manually run my daisy through this orifice. And that's exactly how I make the Ainsley Daisy yarn. So I'm gonna unwind it off the bobbin, and they're gonna look all funky when you first take them off because they had to go through the they had to go through the orifice. So they're gonna look all funky, and it's no big deal because they're, you know, you're just gonna go and you're gonna un, you're gonna you're gonna spruce them up. You know? And if you need to, I mean, this is a very labor-intensive yarn. You would have to go back and you would just refelt the outsides of some of these. You know, I just go around and refelt and make sure that my daisy looked beautiful. This one got all funky. No big deal. I know that I did a really good job felting this 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 bump there. So I'm just gonna. Sometimes I use a brush. I actually brush it. But then you run the risk of taking some of your, your fiber out, like actually pulling it out. But So there you have it. This is your Ainsley Daisy yarn. Go out, make your yarn, make some money, and give people the gift of your craft. If you have any questions, you can email me at lily at mac.com. I'm absolutely 100% happy to help you. Also, you know that you can find me on Ravelry at Namaste Farms on Facebook at Namaste Farms. And we have our blog talk radio on Thursday night, 6 p.m. Pacific. Thank you so much and happy spinning.